channel. Oh boy, has it been a long time. It's, um, it's been a really long time. I think it's been close to three years since I have uploaded anything on this channel and I have comp <laughs> I've contemplated coming back so many times and I've actually filmed quite a few videos since I saw you last and for whatever reason it just didn't feel right. So I didn't post them but I think that I am finally ready to come back and come back into um, doing something I really love which was YouTube and sharing my passion for journaling and planning and pretty much anything to do with paper or journaling or stickers and pens and all those beautiful things. So I thought that today I would take some time and just kind of talk to you about what I have been doing for the last three years since I talked to you last. Um, and so you can see that I have all these journals out in front of me and they're different than what I used to do. Um, so I guess I'll just go ahead and I'll get started with the very first one that I did after um, stopping my YouTube. So the last time that I did a YouTube video was three years ago, like I said, um, and the reason that I stopped doing YouTube is because, honestly, I felt that at that point the planner community had gotten really, really toxic, and I just wanted to take a break from everything planner related, and so I did for quite a few months, and then I ended up coming back into it, and I found the world of um, creative journaling, and I found that to be a lot less um toxic and a lot less like consumer cons rampant like a the um journal community was a lot less like I don't know um buying based it was more creative so that's what I did I left my planner behind and I started working in this journal I started this in um October 28th of 2017 and I worked in here for quite a while um I really loved this journal it's a Midori MD paper, and it's the A5 size, and it's a graph graph um, journal. You can see the little squares, and I worked in here for a long time. My main inspiration for this journal was Creatively Free to Be Me, um, a YouTube channel here, <laughs> a YouTube channel here on YouTube, run by Leanne, and she had a journal that she was calling her Omni Journal, and it was this exact same journal that she this this journal was the exact same journal that she was using. And I loved her so much and I loved her energy so much that I bought a journal and wanted to be just like here. So I did Create December just like she was doing and I did a bunch of things just like her. And I really loved it. But I really didn't love the size. Um, it took me a really, really long time to do each one of these pages. And at this point in my journaling life, I wasn't used to writing and so there's tons and tons and tons of blank pages. And so that was really discouraging for me. And I eventually, as you'll see up here coming up, I stopped journaling in this for a long while. Um, I had lots going on in my like academic life. I was in college and I was at the end of my program. I'm um, an elementary school teacher now. Sorry, this one is glued together. I didn't realize um, I'm an elementary school teacher now, but at the end of my program when I was working in this journal, I was doing a lot of practicums and a lot of student teaching type activities, and so I didn't have a lot of time to journal. And then I ended up going with my work to a, a, a Reggio Emilia um, conference, Naria conference, and I ended up filling up this journal with a lot of like writing like this, and it was really different than the style that I had been doing in this part of the planner and so that was really discouraging and so I really haven't touched this planner since 2019 um that is when I did all this and then actually I shouldn't say that I have touched this planner since 2019 about a month ago I came back to this planner and I or not this planner this journal and I did this page and I did this page in this one. I just prepped a couple pages to hopefully come back to it, but as you can see, I really haven't touched it. This is a piece of artwork one of my students gave me. So yeah, so this is what I used right after getting out of the planner community and hopping into the journal community. You can see that I have used a lot of the pages, but a lot of them are still blank. So yeah, so that was the first one. Um, I feel like this journal was, is, was and is really special to me because it helped me get back into doing something I really loved. Um, like I was talking about in the beginning, I just, I felt like the planner community had become so toxic and so negative 
um, mainly because all the Scragger Creek drama that I just needed it somewhere different to go. And so creative journaling was the next best place for me. So yeah, so this, this journal is what really got me into that. And so it has a really special place in my heart. But while I was exploring creative journaling, like I said, I was doing a lot of YouTube um, research and I was watching a lot of other people that kept creative journals. I actually found my next creative journal <laughs> or next thing I really wanted to try, which was a glue book. Oh, there's an earring in my glue book. I've actually been looking for this. <laughs> um, anyways, my next journal was a glue book. I started this um, concurrently when I had this journal. I also started this one. And so this journal, I really set up for myself. Um, I set a precedent for myself that I didn't have to write at all. All I would do was collage because that's what I really love to do in this journal, but I felt um, obligated to write because I had started writing in the beginning and I was okay with it in the beginning. But then as I got busier and as I wanted to do more and more journaling, I had a hard time keeping up with the writing. So that's what I started in here was I started um, just doing the collage aspect of journaling. And so this was my first glue book. And I really like it. I didn't finish, I haven't finished this either, but I am still working pretty um, consistently in this book. Um, you can see I started this in 2018. Yeah, so I started this like in the middle of this journal. I started my glue book in the middle of that journal. And I have really used a ton of Ikea pages <laughs> from Ikea magazines in here. And I used some child artwork from my past students, um, wrapping papers. But I really loved doing this glue book style. But again, I was feeling like, ah, this really isn't my style either because while I didn't like doing as much writing as I was doing in here, I did want to do a little bit more writing and talk about my day a little bit more. And so at first I was trying to do it with like little poems and like things that I would find that were similar to what was going on in my life. Um, but they weren't, they wasn't, it was, just wasn't, this, I knew right away that this couldn't be the only thing that I was using to journal. So, I'll show you what I did next. Um, I'll just finish flipping through some of these pages. But the next thing that I did was I tried going back into a, another A5 size notebook. This is, again, another A5, same as my first journal. Um, I tried going back into another A5 journal, but I um, decided, see, you can see, I didn't finish it. Um, and I'm still working on this journal. I love my glue book and I will probably finish it. But anyways, I, um, after I started this glue book, I knew that I wanted to get back into something kind of more similar to this where I could write and I could journal and I could paint and I could collage and kind of do whatever I wanted. I wanted another Omni journal. That's the original idea that brought me into creative journaling and that is what I wanted to do again. So I started another book and I started this little notebook. I thought because it's so much skinnier than this one, it had so much less pages, I thought that I could definitely finish this and I wouldn't get discouraged. I thought that this would be perfect for me. And for a while it really was. So for some reason I started this in the back of the book, like I went backwards, I don't know. I thought, I think that I was trying to be quirky or trying to be something that maybe I wasn't. So I'll just show you what I have. I The first thing I did was I had a pocket that I put on right here. Um, this this piece right here. Let me show you. What am I doing? <laughs> this piece right here is a jelly print that I made on my jelly plate. I love doing that as well. And then here's just a piece of scrapbooking paper. And then um, these are all just little pieces of ephemera or little bits of paper, paper um, that I was, I had cut up and I was planning to use, but I obviously haven't used yet. So I just saw something in here. I think it said July 9th, 29 or uh, July 2019 and I think that's pretty accurate um as to like when I was using this book and so this again it's a lot si more similar to this style where I was doing collaging and drawing and writing and everything all in one book um and in this book I had decided that I would try doing a planning spread in this journal as well this is another idea that I got from Creatively For You To Be Me, um, Leanne, and I tried to plan like she was planning and it just didn't go so well, um, but I did like it. This was also, this um, summer was my first, like when this journal was happening, this was my first year being a lead teacher, <laughs> um, and so as you can probably imagine, my life was very chaotic, and so I didn't have time to keep up with my journal. And you can see I'm falling back into my old habits. There's lots of blank pages. 
And then um, you can see, this one's beautiful. I love this page. But as you can see up here, I stopped decorating them. I started just um, writing like notes in black and white. And you know, that's fine, but it's not, it didn't make my heart sing. And so I didn't finish it, it again. <laughs> Um, I think I had about, let's see, I have um, probably like 20-ish pages, no, probably less than that, probably like 10, 15 pages left in this journal that I just never got to because it just wasn't making my heart sing. So I moved again into a different journal and I thought, okay, this time it must be because of the size. That's why I'm not finishing them. So I abandoned, oh, and also... Both of the two leather journals that I found that I've showed so far, they're both speckled fawns. Love speckled fawns. Love Terry. Um, love that company. But anyways, the next journal that I decided I would go into was a B6. Um, a B6 is something that I had always wanted to try. It was all the rage when I started this. And so I decided a B6 size must be for me. It must be the perfect size to journal in but also it wouldn't like take up too much space to write like I wouldn't have to write a lot <laughs> and but you'll see as we get closer to the end I continued with my old habits and I didn't end up finishing the journal so I started this b6 and I was really excited I had made a new Instagram account and I was rocking it out I would do like pages a day um and this started, this journal started right around the same time as quarantine started. So I was doing this um, right around last summer and last spring. So I was rocking it out. I was loving the size. I was loving the pages. And I was just like, oh, oh, don't worry. I'll do lots of pre-decorating and I'll come back to do the writing. And that didn't happen for much of this journal. So I'll just show you what I have done so far. Um... So I just had lots of pages, like, I, I think I had, how many pages did I actually have done? I think I have, like, three spreads actually done. So here's a page, here's a page, which I would consider to be done, and then here's another, like, page with a tip-in, and I would consider all of these to be done, um, but then these pages, all I did was watercolor on them, and oh, here I drew something. I actually really love that drawing, that's so pretty, um, and I did some stamping, and I did, oh, another piece of little bits I need to use. <laughs> oh yeah, so actually I did get farther in this journal than I had thought originally when I sat down to do this video, but as you can see, excuse me, again, I've fallen into my old habits where I pre-decorate, do lots of, like, I don't know, what is this, um, journal, not, what's it called? Collaging. I do lots of collaging, but then I don't keep up with the writing. However, this journal, I will give myself a little bit more grace. I was actually in Okay, three years later, still the same old Larissa can't get it together with the technology. So as I was saying before I got cut off, um, I was using this journal, but I stopped using it because um, I started moving, and not only was I moving, but I started doing, like, a lot more, like, my school started back up, my school opened back up, and I started being a teacher again in July of 2020, and so I ended up deciding that this was actually too big for me. And again, I needed to move down into a smaller size again. So that is what I did after my B6. I decided I would go for, um, whoops, let me put it in the pile. <laughs> the carnage pile. It's already growing over here. But let me, let me get what I got. Let me show you what I, got, what I did next. Um, I think it's, yes, it's this one. So after my B6, I decided... Not only did I not like the size of this, but I hated the paper quality. As you can see over here, um, it bleeds like crap. <laughs> it bleeds everywhere, and so, like, I couldn't watercolor on it very well. And it really didn't stand up to tip-ins super well. I could just tell in the little bit that I journaled in this book that this was not a good option for me. And that makes sense, because this was only a dollar at Michael's. But, anyways, the next thing I decided to do was I decided I would make my own journal out of, um cardstock and out of my jelly prints because at this time I was doing a lot of jelly printing which I absolutely love this is an old address so it's I don't care you can see it whatever but um I made a journal out of jelly prints that I had been that I had made and I decorated most of it and I was doing like journaling but it was more sporadic um and so you can see like the first couple pages were done but it wasn't as, um, 
but it wasn't filled out like in order and for some reason I thought that that would be fine in the beginning but then it really wasn't it started bugging me so I stopped liking this and decided that okay I liked this size but this for whatever reason this this wasn't working again so I decided to go into a journal that I actually bought off of Etsy this is from Oh geez, I hope you can see this, victoryroad.com, <laughs> which is like a artist, and I really love this, it's so cute, it's like a little, um, it's a junk journal that she made on this kind of binding, I don't know what that is, a spiral of some kind, um, but she put all these papers in here, I'm just gonna do a quick flip because I did not use this literally at all, but I really do like this journal, so I try, <laughs> I carried this around for like a month thinking that I would start using it or something would happen where I would get attached to it and I couldn't get past the first page. I did this and I knew right away that this, oops, that's coming off. I knew right away that this wouldn't work for me. So I, again, switched and I got into a different journal. And here is where the magic starts. I, oh, this is not a speckled fawn before I move on. This is a um, apple pig and I think this is called Duke Duck. Anyways, I love this leather. It's um, it's a beautiful notebook, and I got this this notebook at a total steal. So yeah, love this one. But anyways, I moved into this notebook, um, and this is I think oh geez, this is a Muji no this is a Muji notebook. Um, I bought this off Amazon. It's an A6 size, and I made the cover from some artwork that one of my kids had done, and then a quote that they had done as well. And it says. I'm hanging it up on the wall so their mommies can be proud of them too. Um, one of my little kiddos at school decided that they would take all of the artwork that the kids had put in their mailboxes and she was going to tape it all to the wall so that way when the parents came into the school to pick up their kids, they would um, see it. That was before COVID, obviously, because now my parents can't come into the school. But anyways, um, I'll just go ahead and flip. So anyways, I started this last year in July. Hmm, actually... Yeah, yeah, I started this in the spring, and then I had this going in the middle of July, um, and I tried to do one book July. I tried, in, and I tried one book July, and I decided that my challenge for one book July would be to finish the book. Not use one book, but to finish the one book that I started, so I actually did it. It just didn't happen in July, so anyways, I'll just go ahead and flip through it. Oh yeah, here's the specs on this notebook. This is the, um, tag. It's a Muji notebook. It's an A6 size. Um, if you look for it on Amazon. It's, it comes in like a pack of five. It's this craft color with um, the orange spine I covered up. I'm only telling you that because I really actually love this journal and I love the paper quality on it. But here we go. I'll just flip through it quickly. Um, again, I was trying to do that thing, the Omni Journal thing, where I try to record everything in one book. Um, and so it's like a mix of journaling and tracking and like note taking and also my calendar, which worked out really well for July actually. But July is when I started moving, like I said earlier, and so I decided this would not work for me, or it didn't, I guess it, it did work for me, but I wasn't able to finish it. So I took a lot of notes from my job, a lot of things that the kids were saying I have in here. Um, yeah, July, no, no, this is from June 25th, 2000, no, this must be, I just must have messed up on my stamp, because this says June, but I know this was done in July, so, um, I thought this was so cool. This is one of my jelly prints that I collaged on top of, and then like I kind of did a giant like, spread. Um, this was really pretty. I, this this was like in this spread, I found my love for journaling again that I had when I first started um, this thing. So I knew I was going in the right direction because I was able to fill up the pages. I was actually adding tippins to write more, but I um, yeah I knew that I found my size. So anyways, I'm gonna keep showing you this. I, like my original journal, I was painting, I was drawing, I was doing collage, I was doing all kinds of stuff in here. And then August hit. August um, is when I officially moved into my new house, and I could, just couldn't keep up with my journal. So I found this funny, I think this is from Chipotle or Cordoba or something, but anyways, we got a bag of takeout, and it, they had these funny, like, wrestler people, <laughs> and one of them is kicking the other one in the face, and so I thought that was so funny and cute that I would write August, and then I would write August, and then me, 
um, to symbolize that I had not done anything in my journal at all in August. Even though I had done a lot in July. All these pages were from July. Um, so, yeah. So, I didn't do anything in August. And then here we are in September. Um, we got engaged. My boyfriend and I, Colin, got engaged September 1st. And so I had some stuff in here. I had the lunar calendar. I had um, my reselling business stuff. Um... Uh, this was just like a spread of all the like different food we had eaten, like all the cool packaging. And then after this spread, I again stopped doing my journal. It was the middle of September. I think I got up to, let's see, it will tell me in this. Yeah, I got up to the middle, the literal middle of September and I stopped doing my journal because I only had a couple pages left and I just didn't have the desire to do it anymore. And also, um, things were really kicking up a couple notches at my school. I had lots and lots and lots to do. Um, this year I had kindergartners and preschoolers, which was a new experience for me for sure. I loved it, but it was a lot of work. So I didn't do anything all the way from September from this spread until here. On Christmas break, I did, I did end up finishing this journal. So I'll just show you that really quick. Um, And some of the pages in the last bit of this, I just did like mixed media and I didn't do any writing or like collaging because I just couldn't finish it. I actually really love this page <laughs> though. I think this came out really cute. I drew this and then this is a jelly print of mine and yeah, I really love this. And it says, enjoy life even when it's shitty. Good job, Larissa. I'm glad that's what you decided to write. <laughs> um... But yeah, and then I finished this spread actually on New Year's, I think New Year's Eve Eve. So like the day before New Year's Eve. Um, and I just drew this little person and yeah, that's the last bit of this book. But the thing that stuck out for me for this book was, yes, it had taken me a long time to finish it. And yes, I had taken lots of breaks, but I finished it. I did it. And so this was the book that I ended 2020 with. And it's the thing that I ended all of this crazy planner, like, or journal, um, life with, it, or journal, like, transition, or journal, journal journey, I guess, um, because after I finished this journal, I knew that I had found my, like, niche again, and I knew that I was gonna get back into it, and so this is where I ended 2020, and for 2021, um, I'm working on my journal, and I will show you that in my next video, um, thank you so, so much for watching and listening to me talk about my whole planner journey. It's amazing, um, that I've been interested in this hobby for so long. I think it's going on seven years at this point that I've been interested in journaling and planning and paper crafting overall. And so I've had, it's been a wild ride and there's definitely been some ups and some downs, but I feel like right now, like after finishing this in 2020, I feel like it's definitely an up. And so I can't wait to show you my 2021 journal. Um, so stick around. Thank you so much if you have been around since the last, if you've been around since the last time I uploaded, which was three, three years ago. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really looking forward to coming back to YouTube. So thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye! Bye.